As Judah was saying with respect to um, uh, what's happening on with chemical control laws in the U.S., the same thing is happening with uh, greenhouse gas emissions. And that is, is Congress is really not doing uh, much uh, of anything, not for the lack of trying, but there just hasn't been a consensus to get any laws passed uh, during the 111th Congress. And you'll hear more about that from uh, Beth and Ashley, who are with our uh, LLC in Washington, D.C. But in any event, the impetus for at least EPA's regulations, and there are very, very many of those, um, was the, uh, the Supreme Court case that came down in uh, 2007, Massachusetts versus EPA. Basically, what the court did is it said that greenhouse gas emissions, including carbon dioxide, are in fact pollutants that can be regulated under the Clean Air Act. The, uh, the case resulted from a petition that was uh, brought uh, uh, before um, the um, uh, EPA, asking EPA, or actually telling EPA that they should regulate uh, greenhouse gas emissions from new motor vehicles, um, regulate those as pollutants under the Clean Air Act. EPA essentially denied the petition and went up on appeal, and uh, of course we now have the Supreme Court saying that yes, they are in fact pollutants. Uh, the Supreme Court directed uh, EPA uh, in that decision to determine whether or not greenhouse gas emissions actually uh, cause or contribute to pollution which affects uh, public health or uh, the public welfare and asked EPA to give that some consideration and to issue a finding. EPA subsequently issued two findings uh, in December of 2009, and the findings are generally referred to as the cause or contribute finding and the endangerment finding. The, the cause or contributor of the EPA engagement filing really it really set the stage for EPA to regulate uh, greenhouse gas emissions for mobile sources and for stationary sources. And basically what EPA said is that yes, we do believe that greenhouse gas emissions do cause or contribute uh, to pollution that affect public health and public welfare uh, and that they do uh, endanger or threaten public health or welfare. There were hundreds of thousands of comments that were filed in response to these two findings. And I just want to point out that these two findings were only findings. They did not contain any new regulations or any new requirements. They were simply EPA uh, findings. EPA went on to say in these two findings, the endangerment and the cause of contributed findings, that the uh, most, most proportion of uh, greenhouse gas emissions emissions are coming from the electricity generation sector, the transportation sector, and the industry sector. And EPA also went on to note that they did not that they did not have to find any harm at this point in time before proceeding to regulation. So that was uh, fairly significant. And on the board here I have the various greenhouse gas emissions uh, that EPA issued the cause or contribute and endangerment finding for. Another significant rule that came out from EPA also in 2009 was the mandatory greenhouse gas reporting rule. And this was not just an EPA initiative. This actually did come out of Congress. It came out of the 2008 Consolidated Appropriations Act. And what Congress directed EPA to do was basically come up with an inventory of greenhouse gas emissions in the United States so we know which way to proceed. And at that time, of course, it was envisioned that Congress was going to enact some sort of cap or trade legislation or some means by to, uh, to regulate greenhouse gas emissions. Generally, the reporting rule applies to um, facilities that are considered major source categories uh, emitting more than 25,000 uh, metric tons of greenhouse gas emissions. But then it also applies to other source categories that do not necessarily emit that level of greenhouse gas emissions. And that includes uh, categories such as chemical manufacturers, uh, landfills, oil refineries, again, electric electricity generators. Now the states, um, and I can't elaborate here as to what those states are, some states already have, in effect, mandatory reporting programs, and this particular rule does not preempt those state reporting programs.
So that's important to consider. Um, this particular report, the first one, is going to be due on March of next year, March 31. And the rule actually became effective um, this past January of 2010. How are emissions going to be verified? The same way really that they're verified by many other programs within the Clean Air Act. You're going to have to self-report your emissions and you're going to have to certify that the emissions that you are in fact reporting are accurate. And just like with other EPA programs, if you are inaccurate or you fail to report properly, you will be subject to enforcement. Uh, one of the things that EPA said is even though this is a new program, uh, that they're not going to ease up on enforcement so that everybody should take care to uh, properly calculate their emissions and uh, get it into EPA. It's going to be submitted electronically. Now, if EPA has any questions, they can go online, they can look at your emissions that you reported, and they may, in fact, conduct um, on-site inspections. So keep that in mind. If you recall, one of the things that I um, elaborated on at the first slide was that the Supreme Court came out with a decision back in 2007 saying that, yes, emissions from greenhouse gas emissions from uh, new vehicles are, in fact, pollutants that can be regulated under the Clean Air Act. Uh, so this gave EPA the authority to go ahead and do what they had been planning to do, which was to issue the uh, EPA final vehicle rule that came out in April of this year. Uh, and what EPA's rule does is it sets forth standards uh, for new vehicles and then the National, uh, Highway Tricky, National Highway Traffic Safety Administration also issued fuel efficiency standards at the same time. So this was both contained in the, uh, the same rule. Uh, this rule takes effect in January 2011 because that is the uh, first point in time that the 2012 model year cars can be sold in the U.S. So essentially it's going to be effective <coughs> next month. It applies to light duty trucks and it applies to cars. I won't go into this here, but you should be aware of the fact that uh, in November of this year, EPA also came out with proposed rules, not yet final, for medium and heavy duty trucks and you can look at this information uh, in your packet uh, when you download it. Now this is a, an important memorandum even though it dates back to 2000 and the reason is is uh, this memorandum was issued by former EPA Administrator Stephen Johnson and basically what it said was that um, pollutants are not subject to regulation under the Clean Air Act until some rule or some provision of the Clean Air, Act, Clean Air Act actually requires control of that particular pollutant. The Obama administration recently reaffirmed this analysis and conclusion that was stated in the 2000 Johnson Memorandum uh, this past year. EPA, EPA basically concluded that the greenhouse gas emissions became effective for stationary sources because of the new vehicle rule, which I just referred to. So we already have, as I uh, said, EPA uh, regulating both uh, regulating mobile sources with respect to cars, light duty trucks, medium and heavy duty trucks, and now, of course, they are moving on to stationary sources. Now, I'm sorry for going through this quickly, the tailoring rule, because this is probably the most complicated of rules that EPA has issued with respect to greenhouse gas emissions, but I only have a limited amount of time. Uh, as many of you may or may not know, with respect to the Clean Air Act, what it does is it has a Prevention of Significant Deterioration Program and a Title V Permitting Program that apply to pollutants regulated by the Act. Essentially, the current EPA program affects pollutants at a 100 ton per year threshold or a 200 ton per year threshold, depending on not whether or not you are a major source within 28 major source categories. EPA recognized that if they went ahead, regulated stationary sources at 100 tons per, per year or 250 tons per year, there was going to be so many permits issued that it was not going to be manageable. The states just couldn't keep up with it. So what EPA did was it decided to issue the Taylor Rule, which said that we're going to establish 
different thresholds for regulation of greenhouse gas emissions, and that's what EPA essentially did. It's going to be a phased-in program in terms of compliance uh, during the first six months of uh, the next year in 2011. Only sources that are already required to have PSD permits or Title V operating permits are going to be subject to the new stationary source rule for greenhouse gas emissions, and that is if they actually have uh, greenhouse gas emissions exceeding 75,000 tons per year. After the first six months, then we're going to move into the next phase, and that's going to be two years from uh, July 2011 going forward to 2013, and essentially EPA is going to go further and regulate greenhouse gas emissions not only from sources that are required to have Title V permits now and PSD permits, but for all sources that are, may emit either 100,000 100, uh, tons per year or 75,000 tons, depending on the source of greenhouse gas emissions. So this is a rule you're going to need to pay attention to. Uh, it is final at this point in time, and as you can imagine, there is a lot of litigation involving this rule. Probably one of the most difficult things about this rule is states are actually required under the Clean Air Act to implement the Federal Clean Air Act, including the tailoring, tailoring rule. Uh, EPA put out two supplemental, supplemental rules recently saying that states, you have to revise your programs, you have to make sure that you can actually regulate greenhouse gas emissions. EPA determined that there were approximately 13 states that currently do not have the authority in place to regulate greenhouse gas emissions. So what is the EPA, EPA said is, we're going to implement a federal implementation rule for those states who do not currently have the authority. The interesting thing here is um, Texas has already informed EPA that it does not plan on issuing any permits containing greenhouse gas emission standards. So uh, look for that lawsuit in the near future. <laughs> Texas is doing its own thing here. The significance here is that uh, there's going to be perhaps a construction moratorium. So if you're in a state that does not have the authority to issue a permit containing greenhouse gas emissions, you may find yourself in a situation where you may not be able to construct that new facility or you may not be able to modify that facility unless your state proceeds with EPA with respect to working on the federal implementation plan. And of course, the federal implementation plan is only going to be a delegation to the federal government back from the state with respect to greenhouse gas emissions. Okay, one thing that EPA has recently done, and I believe this was just within the past week, is they did go ahead and they issued guidance, as they typically do with respect to the Clean Air Act, on how you can evaluate your facility for greenhouse gas emissions and determine what technology can be implemented to control greenhouse gas emissions. Um, so what they did was they came out with a guidance discussing what is best available control technology, which has to be applied to a particular pollutant at either a unit or at the entire facility. So if you look at this guidance, it will explain how you can evaluate your particular facility or unit for best available technology. And EPA also has issued a number of white papers available so that you can use those for evaluating control technologies that may be able to be used. Uh, it's applicable to uh, electric utilities, uh, large and commercial industrial boilers, uh, also pulp and paper industry, uh, and some other industries as well. And finally, uh, the, the guidance talks about the fact that there's going to be two-part calculation uh, that's going to be used in terms of evaluating your emissions uh, with respect to uh, global warming. You're going to have to look at the global warming, warming potential and traditional mass balance. And EPA is placing emphasis in the guidance on using energy, energy efficiency technologies as a source.